Hey there garden friends, it's Heather at Bush Puppy Farm. Well, it's been a very dramatic 48 hours. So when I last saw you, it was Monday afternoon. I had finished laying compost in the um, high tunnel in preparation for transplant. That's not gonna be happening. <laughs> um, the, I found out that night, uh, right before I was going to bed actually, which was a terrible time to discover this because it sent me into a tailspin, uh, the property was sold. So um, that instantly put me into fear about what's gonna happen to my business out there. Um, according to California law, the new owners um, are supposed to honor fixed term leases, which is what all of us out there have. However, that law applies to people renting living space, like apartments and, and houses and stuff. There's nothing in the law that states that it also applies to leasing land. Um, secondly, uh, when this originally came up a week or so ago, the landowner's real estate agent told me, um, yes, your lease is supposed to transfer, but most of the time buyers just want you out, so they will try to pay you off to get you out. Um, so, <laughs> Knowing that and having met the person who has bought the property, um, it's pretty clear that we're not gonna be wanted there. And I still have over a year left on my lease. My lease expires in June, January of 2024. So in order to not put my business at great risk, I decided not to put anything in the ground because between now when I plant and when I need to start harvesting those things, those flowers, that's six months away and a lot of things can happen in that time period. And this is a very narrow window for planting for me. So what I've decided to do is go back to planting at home. I'm so blessed and so grateful that I have this space. It is smaller than it was because I, I'm not going to give up my chicken space. Um, so instead of three 40 foot long beds, which is what we had here before, I have three 30 foot long beds. Out at the farm, I had seven 40 foot long beds. So this is a great deal less space. Um, so what I did this morning, uh, and I didn't film it, I, I've been going through a lot of emotional <laughs> of dealing with this stuff. So um, it, I've been kind of wanting to just be quiet and sit with this. Uh, so this morning, I did a lot of work out here. Let me show you. Okay, here you can see the three beds. I harvested all of the zinnias and all of the mahogany splendor hibiscus for a wedding this weekend. So I've got two huge buckets packed full of flowers, uh, which is great. And I'm really happy about that. And then I came in and I cleared out all of these beds. So I pulled out all of the zinnias and all of the hibiscus, which I had an in intended to do anyway. Um, the zinnias, even though they were still producing, they could have produced for another probably month or two. Uh, they were coated in powdery mildew, so it's fine. Um, generally have a hard time starting to pull things out when they're still producing, but then once I get going, I'm ruthless and I just yank it all out. Um, and I also had to pull out all the food that I planted because I need the space for flowers. I have left two things. One, these cabbages, because I couldn't bring myself to pull them out. I mean, look at them. Look how healthy and huge. So there's just six plants there. I'm gonna plant around them. <laughs> uh, so, you know, there's still gonna be flowers in this bed. And then I have yet to pull up these marigolds because they're just kind of amazing right now and still so many blooms left to go. And this is a very small, like little five foot section. I will pull it out eventually when they're done and I'll put like a second succession of, uh, you know, fever few or something in here. So, um, but I am going to enjoy them while they're, at, while they're here. I put all of the detritus into the chicken bed area. That's just gonna compost down over the winter. Um, before we add wood chips. So as you can probably imagine, it's been uh, a very emotional uh, couple of days. 
it's been a whirlwind year. I mean, in January, I was bemoaning the fact that I needed more space to grow. Then the farm opportunity came along and I took it in February. I did a lot of work out there to convert that area into growing space. I grew, actually I, hard, I didn't really even get a full crop out of it because the deer ate everything. So, you know, that's also a real bummer. Um, thankfully I had this space still planted in spring stuff because I had planted it last fall. Um, so what's gonna happen moving forward? I have no idea if the new owner is going to, I don't know, I don't know what he's gonna do. He hasn't reached out to any of us yet. This is, uh, I think, a cash sale, so it's gonna happen real fast. Um, we were supposed to be notified in writing that 120 days before they listed that this was happening so that we could make plans and that never happened. So there's some legal stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, so I'm thinking I am gonna recoup my expenses from out there. Um, so the good news is the fencing, the high tunnel, the birdies beds, all of that is movable. Um, and there's no plants in the ground out there right now, other than all of the perennial stuff that I put in around the greenhouse that I grew from seed. So what's gonna stay there uh, when I pack up, which I am intending to pack up because um, it just, it feels wrong now. <laughs> also, the well is dry. I was worried about putting plants in the ground because I didn't know if there would be any water. Um, well, uh, we don't have a well here at my house. We're on city water and I'm on a drip system and I've been growing in this yard here for four years. So I know that it works. Um, so on the positive side, I have six bags of compost in the back of the car that I'm just gonna use to just top off those beds. Um, because they just need basically a side dressing at this point. And then I have tons and tons of seedlings and I'm gonna start transplanting this afternoon. The sun is uh, behind a redwood right now, so we're in shade, which is nice, but it is only like 72 degrees, so it's really lovely outside. So I'm super excited to transplant. It does mean having to totally rework my growing plan because I've started a lot more seedlings than I have space for. Um, I have some wonderful friends locally who have offered uh, winter space in their gardens. Um, but I, I probably won't take them up on that because I know that these crops are gonna need to be in the ground until like May. And these folks are gonna wanna put in a summer garden probably March. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it, I, I'm just gonna focus here. So plan, I'm gonna do tulips instead of putting them in the hoop house like I was gonna do. I'm gonna do them here just like I did them last year. This garden bed that's right in front of me um, was just gonna get cover cropped until the spring. So now it's going to be the tulip bed. It is a four by four bed. And last year I fit about, I, almost a thousand tulips um, in the bed, this bed. Um, and I also still have tons of tulip crates. So I'm just gonna grow all my tulips and crates just like I did last year. And that worked out just fine. Um, I am going to put as many ranunculus and snaps in the ground as possible uh, because those are multi-producers. They just keep pumping out flowers for months. And so I wanna make sure I have as many of those as possible. But then I do need to use a lot of space, at least a whole bed for greenery. So I'm gonna do uh, Bupleurum, which is a direct sow, Bells of Ireland, which are direct sow, uh, Nigella, which is direct sow, and uh, Feverfew, which I've already got the um, seedlings for. All of those are going to get a bed. And then I've still got stock and straw flower and status and all that to get in as well. So I'm going to have to make a lot of choices. Uh, and then I got to figure out what to do with the other seedlings because I don't want to waste them. I can probably pop them in the backyard in the uh, cottage garden bed. I'll probably put a bed down the center of our side yard <laughs> because we don't use that grass for anything. It's mostly weeds. Even though it won't look right, uh, for temporary time being, it'll work and uh, we can always resod it um, to make it look better when we no longer need the space. In the meantime, we're gonna look for property that we can buy ourselves to upgrade our acreage. And, uh, but that's gonna take a long time. So 
that's our plan moving forward. So I'm gonna get started. I'm super excited to start transplanting. Okay, I tried filming some of it, but my camera just kept uh, cutting off and burning out. So <laughs> I will just show you what I did, but transplanting done and there's still space. So let me show you. Planted everything a lot closer than I usually do, but that's okay. So right here, we've got uh, some Amimagus, uh, same thing here, followed by Orlea. So this bed right here in the middle is um, there's a lot of filler up front, which is exactly what I need. So different types of Amimagus um, and Orlea. And then the rest of the bed, except for the marigolds down there, is straw flower. Lots of different colors, because uh, I used it so much for drying this year. And then this bed over here is only partially filled. That is all stock and it's planted super close together because that is a single flower producing um, plant and so there's no point in taking up a huge amount of space because as soon as they're done I'll pull them up and put something else in there. The rest of this bed is for ranunculus. Um, I'm hoping that will be enough space. <laughs> Those are what's uh, pre-sprouting right now. And then like I said over here is the Ami Magus. Uh, I'm leaving this cabbage because I just don't want to pull it up. Um, and then this bed is snapdragons. Snapdragons for um, much of the way. And then we run into status. And there's lots of status going along down here. And then we hit some um, pincushion flower, a special breed of scabiosa. And then that's all fever few down there. Um, I would like to plant more fever few. I absolutely love it. So I'll probably start a second succession. Over here along the fence line, I've got some um, uh, Rudbeckia triloba, which is a perennial Rudbeckia that I'm going to use as filler. Um, I also have a firmament, uh, forget me not, and a little bit of bachelor button. Uh, they're not my favorite, so I'm not going to put a whole lot there. And so the rest of this uh, fence line bed is uh, going to be saved for peonies interplanted with um, uh, daffodils and those will be permanent. Uh, that was always the plan for that. And then this front bed is uh, going to be my Buplurum and um, Bells of Ireland. And at the uh, front there, I have Agrostema that did so well last year. So uh, also uh, peonies will be going in here as well. So the, um, the Blue Plurum and Bells of Ireland, I just have two seed packets. I'm going to do uh, a good sowing down here, pull this borage out, and then um, some peonies will be going in here that will also be interplanted. 
So I still have, you know, unplanted seedlings in the greenhouse, but not nearly as many. Um, I, like I said, I did plant everything very close, but it is, we are going into winter. Now the next thing I need to do is uh, sprinkle all the beds with the Repels All uh, granulated garlic to keep the rodents out because they really did decimate my snapdragons last year. So I'm going to be proactive about that and probably come out here every like four days and put that stuff down. Um, and I'm going to need to install the hoops, the metal hoops, so that I can put row cover over these guys when we start getting our rains because otherwise they just get flattened by the rain. So they'll put on a little bit of growth over the next couple of weeks until we get our frost, but then they're basically going to sit there and do nothing throughout the winter. And then um, come early spring when we start to warm up a little bit and get out of the frozen temperatures at night, they'll start to put on a lot of growth. And then hopefully by March, we'll start having our first flowers. So I'm really happy to get this planted up. Uh, yes, I'm still sad about the farm, but having all of this here uh, and planted and knowing that I'm gonna have stuff for people um, makes me feel very secure. And I know that I'll deal with all the infrastructure out there, pack it all up and put it into storage until we can have um, more space, more land to put it on. And I'll just keep growing in my space here. That does mean that I'm not gonna be able to grow lots and lots of vegetables next year like I had planned but um, that's okay. I will just do what I can do. Um, we'll still enjoy tomatoes and things like that. It's just gonna be on a smaller scale. So that's gonna be it for today. Uh, I might go on and put the metal hoops up and I need to test the irrigation. Don't know if it's actually how, I think there's a couple of holes that I need to plug, um, but then I'm going to uh, go take a shower. Sun's setting and uh, I'm tired and hungry. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your help and your support. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.